Hi everyone, welcome back to the next diecast. In today's video, I'll be showing you and reviewing the 2018 scale 1969 Dodge Charger RT made by Maisto. I got this model from Sam's Club for $17 in total. Thought that was an awesome deal. And you can probably find this at um, other wholesale clubs too for usually between $15 and $18. And you can find it elsewhere online for usually between $30 and $45. I probably wouldn't pay more than a $45 for this particular uh, model though. And I'll kind of get into that as I discuss the model throughout the review here. But um, th this model comes in several different colors. This purple is actually new for 2022. Meister just released it in their catalog for 2022. And it also comes in black, just kind of an all black look. I'm not sure if the roof on that one is a matte finish like you see here or not, but it is in fact all black. And Meister also makes a light green version with slightly different wheels and these Firestone tires with the black roof and interior. And in the past, it's also come in blue and orange. And for those two models, I believe the roofs match the rest of the paintwork, although you do still have the black striping in the back. So lots of colors to pick from. Um, this model was released, I believe, about five or six years ago or so. I forget the exact year, but it's been available for a few years now, and it has turned up at um, wholesale clubs in years past and this year. And Maisto, I think, should be making it for quite some time because it is based off a pretty popular uh, car. So this is based off the second generation Dodge Charger, which in real life was made from 1968 through 1970. For 1969, there were a few changes to the car, like you had this um, split in the grille here that was done in chrome. And the RT version came standard with these kind of black stripes that go over the rear trunk and kind of down the rear uh, fenders back there. Um, in 1968, it was actually two kind of smaller stripes, but, but in 69, they changed it to kind of having one large stripe and two kind of um, accenting smaller stripes that surrounded the uh, large stripe. But overall, I think this is a pretty good model for the price. Um, there are a few, um, I think, details that could be added to it throughout, but overall, I think this is a, a pretty solid model. So we'll go ahead and get into the review here. We'll start up here with the front of the car. Meister, I think, does an awesome job of capturing the overall shape and look of this iconic car here. Um, you have kind of like that Coke bottle shape that was kind of, you know, trademark of, you know, the late 60s for these uh, muscle cars and everything. But the overall shape is just fantastic. You actually don't get headlights up here because they are hidden. On the real car, these two smaller grills would um, come up when you were to turn on the um, headlights. There was some kind of a vacuum function that allowed these to come um, up and down, sort of. But aside from that, you do have a kind of nicely done grill up here. It isn't fully perforated, but Maestro does do a good job of kind of making it look like it is with the textured mesh that, that they put on here. And it is, of course, made of um, plastic. And you do have this very small Charger RT badging over here. It looks like they're actually separately cast from the grill, but they're not. They're actually a part of the grill. But I think they're very well done. You have kind of a nice silver re reflective paint going on there. And then you have the standout red paint for the RT. Chrome detailing on, on the model, I would say, is overall very well done. Uh, just be careful with, you know, fingerprints and stuff. You probably do want to um, clean them off so the chrome, you know, won't fade um, over a period of time. But I think Maisto as a whole has improved on their chrome on their recent models, which is awesome to say. But you have this kind of chrome bumper and the chrome grill up here. Both are separately cast plastic pieces, and they look pretty well done. Then you get this Dodge license plate down there as well. Paint quality is fantastic. Uh, the purple looks awesome on the Dodge Charger. Um, when I saw that Costco had the exclusive purple version last summer, I thought, you know what, I hope Maestro either releases this in purple or Sam's Club has it in purple. And in this case, both happened. <laughs> um, Maestro released the purple as a regular color as part of their catalog, and the model turned up at Sam's Club. But the paint is nice and smooth throughout, and it looks uh, fantastic. And then for the roof, it is actually made of plastic, but it's kind of very well integrated onto the car, Kind of similar to Meister's 1965 Pontiac GTO. Although in the case of this roof, you have kind of a matte sort of flat finish to it. Nice and smooth. Because um, on the real car, it would have, I think, actually been metal as, as opposed to vinyl. The GTO has more of like a vinyl pattern to it. But just overall very well done. And then back here, you do have the uh, black striping, which is very well done. And you have the RT kind of integrated into that stripe back there, which is also a very uh, cool touch. Then you have the very small charger inscription behind the rear uh, window there. And then you have separately cast side windows and front vent windows on here as well. Decently done chrome wipers. I doubt the real wipers were made of chrome, but at least Maestro does do the accurate size and shape for these. 
and you have the chrome uh, mirror on here too, which is very sturdy. That won't be coming off. And you do have this fuel cap back here done in a separately cast chrome piece, which looks very well done. My saw also does a good job with the wheels and tires. These are accurate to the real 69 Charger. You have these nice kind of Firestone tires on here. I think on the real Charger, if the, for the real Firestone tires that came on the RT, they would have some more, I guess, printing on them. But at least Maestro did these branded tires to begin with. They were kind of doing away with, with um, branded tires on their models for a while. But it seems like they're bringing them back a little bit, which is awesome to say. And the white Firestone... Um, inscriptions, I guess, kind of do create a nice accent with the charger when you have it up on the shelf, which is awesome to say. Back here, nicely done uh, tail lights, separately cast plastic pieces. No pegs to be seen either, which is nice to see. And you have kind of these nice chrome borders around them too. And then you do have this RT badge in the center here, which is done in kind of a matte finish. You have these exhaust pipes back here, but they're actually just solid chrome pieces. My suit didn't even do any effort to make them kind of somewhat... um you know, like hollowed out, but at least they're there. They are, I guess, the accurate shape. I might actually go ahead and paint the insides black to kind of create a more, you know, hollowed out look maybe. I'm not really too sure on that, but you can't even really see them too well in the first place unless you kind of look at them from like this angle, but yeah, I wish they added some more detail in that sense. And you do have a nice separately cast plastic bumper back here too, which is done in chrome, uh, which is similar to the front bumper done in um, chrome. And of course, on the model, you do get full steering and a suspension as well. Very good suspension, pretty decent steering. On mine, it kind of turns one direction better than the other, but I'm sure that that's just a factory defect. You won't have that problem. And the turn signals are, are actually just painted on, unfortunately, but Maestro does that pretty much for all their models. Um, wish they kind of done them as separately cast plastic pieces, but at least they're painted on to begin with. Some manufacturers will kind of skip details like that, but Maestro at least um, puts them on there in some form or fashion. Now, in terms of opening features on the model, you do have an opening rear trunk, of course, which opens up like so on these kind of stiff dog leg hinges. But the whole, the whole underside of the trunk lid is actually painted and has a decent um, texture on it, which is nice to say. Not too much to see aside from that in there. You have kind of a kind of a rough texture going on with this plastic in here. Of course, on the real charge, you would have kind of carpeting going on in there. But Maestro does do a good job of kind of capturing the inside of here. You have the right shapes and the right dimensions and everything. You can even kind of see the kind of see the uh, the uh, wheel wells towards the back there as well, but really not too much to speak of aside from that. Of course, you do have the opening hood as well, which opens up like so. If I get my finger underneath there. There we go. This has the Magnum V8 that came standard on the '69 Charger RTs. My side, I think, does a good job of capturing the overall look of this uh, engine here. I'm sure there are a few missing components like wires and hoses and whatnot, but you do have several plastic pieces going on in here. A nice kind of orange uh, main block on here with the Magnum on top there and that white uh, lettering, which is the accurate font you would see on the real Chargers engine, which is a very cool touch. And you can pretty much see down in the bottom on here, there's also a separately cast a radiator here and a few wires and um, hoses and whatnot. Definitely not one of Maestro's best engines for a muscle car model, but definitely not the worst either. And if you have it up on the shelf, it really does look cool like this, especially having the orange paired up with the purple. It just looks super cool. And the underside of the hood, um, there's no like underspray. It is fully painted. You can even see like the model code lettering on the uh, bottom there, which is kind of cool. But yeah, not really too much to uh, show aside from that. You do actually have some chrome detailing around the block here, so... This is probably like seven or eight separately cast plastic pieces. Some manufacturers will just do like one giant, you know, single slab or single mold. But on here, Maestro does do the effort of putting in multiple pieces, which is nice to say. You can kind of see the steering a little bit if you look down between the radiator and the fan, which is hard to see. Yeah, there is a fan. It's just impossible to see because it's all dark. And of course, you do have the opening doors on the model as well. They open up on spring-loaded hinges. Detailing on the door panels is decent. There really is not too much to see, similar to the real charger. I'm sure there should be some more, you know, silver and stuff detailing on here, but at least the texture and the overall shape of the door panels is nicely done. You have kind of that textured door pocket down here too. And I assume the lining would be like for the speakers and stuff. Um, there's a better look on this side too, but yeah. And the panels are nice and flush with the uh, metal doors. And you have kind of a decent texture going on there too, but yeah. Not too much to see. I think some more fine detailing would have been welcome, but I think what they have there is just fine. 
Speaking of fine detailing, you really don't get that much fine detailing on the dashboard here. I was kind of surprised to see that, not even like the vents or anything. I'm not really sure why Maestro chose to, to uh, do that, but I mean, you do have the overall accurate shape and everything for the dash, but there should be some kind of radio and stuff on there, and at least a vent or two. And I guess at least they do a nice job with the texture. You can see it is kind of like a nice like leather pattern, but there should be some, you know, at least buttons or some vents, I think, molded on here. If you look at pictures of the actual 69 Chargers interior, there is some, you know, more, I guess, features and detailing. Maestro does do the, the uh, gauges, though, at least behind the uh, steering wheel here. And they are the accurate, you know, size and shape and whatnot. And, and the steering wheel is uh, pretty well done, too. You have kind of a painted, um, kind of light brown wood pattern, which is kind of done in like a glossy finish. And then you have the black kind of matte portion in the center. But yeah, I think more fine detailing would have definitely been welcome in here. And the shifter is a nice separately cast plastic piece, but it is all black. I think there is maybe some coloring on the real Chargers shifter. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But yeah, I think some more fine detailing would have been welcome on the dashboard and the shifter here. For 17 bucks, this is definitely not bad at all, but I think for upwards of $45, you'd expect a little bit uh, more. They do, I think, uh, make up for that lack of detailing with the seats. They are pretty much the accurate size and shape to what you would see on the real Charger, down to the number of, I guess, squared off sections you see here. There's six on the seat back and six on the seat bottom. And they do have a nice, you know, texture to them, almost like they're made of, like, leather or something. Of course, they are just made of um, hard plastic. And even the back seat, too. They do a nice job of, uh, of you know, making that as a separately cast plastic piece. And the seats are also a nice and a sturdy too, which is nice to see. And you have kind of a chrome accent, looks like between the two uh, front seats here as well. See, so not really too much to uh, talk about aside from those small details. Uh, you do have a, you do actually get a molded floor mat though on this side, which is a nice touch. Kind of makes up for the lack of detailing on the uh, dashboard. Maestro is kind of doing away with um, those additional details too, but on this model, you do actually have that part of the dust down there, but you can see, um, yeah, kind of zooming in shows it up a little bit better. But. And you do have four pedals and a, and a floor mat on this side too. It's just very hard to see because the interior is all black. Like you can kind of make out the outlines of the pedals right here, but the pedals are the accurate shape and sizes and everything. I might go ahead and make them silver to kind of make them stand out a, a little bit more, but at least they include those kind of a floor mat details down here. They have a nice uh, texture to them too, I, I forgot to add. But aside from that, I think some more fine detailing on the dashboard would, would have definitely been a, a welcome touch. But I think um, the lack of detailing on here is made up for, for the most part, with the nicely detailed seats and those extra touches like these floor mats and that kind of textured plate underneath the uh, glove box, which are cool touches. Go ahead and close these up. And then for the undercarriage, pretty well detailed. Um, I don't really mind the chrome exhaust system so much. I know some people aren't really a fan of most of those chrome exhaust systems, but at least it does kind of stand out a little bit. And you can kind of see the engine detailing poking out from down here and the whole um, steering system, which is always cool to uh, take a look at. And then you have the uh, rear portion here too, which has a nice uh, kind of three-dimensional uh, look to it. Of course, it is done in like mostly black, but you're not really going to get you know super fine detailing for the undercarriage of a budget model. But I think under here, it's uh, very well detailed for the most part. Overall, I think this is a pretty good model of the 69 Dodge Charger. And if you collect uh, muscle cars and kind of, you know, want to have all the iconic ones in your collection, this is, I think, a must have. And it's definitely a good choice to get if you don't want to break the bank. Like if you want to have a collection of 60s muscle cars in your 118 scale collection, but don't want to, you know, spend too much money. Uh, for $17, this is an absolute steal, I would say. Even for $30 or $40, it is still a pretty good priced model. Although I probably wouldn't pay that much more than $45, seeing that there is a lack of detail in some areas. But I think, as a whole, this really is a cool model of a very cool car. And I would definitely uh, recommend getting it if, if you can find it for a good price. As always, feel free to comment down below with your thoughts on the model here. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.